There's a lot of homes out there. You don't have peace. You're confused. You feel like the enemy has just free reign yeah, in your chaos. home. Chaos is Lord of your home. And I'm Breaks telling you, please, please lean in to what JB, my dad, is going to share today. Dad, welcome to the show at home. <laughs> You're back. It's been a while. We finally convinced you to come back. I, I'm like the <laughs> prodigal father here. I, listen, okay. I'm so glad you've forgiven us for whatever we did that kept you away from and the show. Nothing. So it's just, oh, I God. think you guys are doing a great job. Oh. And I wanted to kind of step back and watch you continue to flourish. Well, thank you. But I'm excited well, about being back on. We need you for today's episode. Uh, we need the Holy Spirit. We do. We do yeah. need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But even the way you were praying for this episode... And praying for the people who are going to listen to this episode before we went into this episode just was a confirmation that you're supposed to be in this room. Well, my heart is deeply burdened to see homes and families protected. Yes. Because there's a greater onslaught today than there was when you guys were kids, and I felt the responsibility to protect you guys. Oh, how much more today? Absolutely. And and you just gave a bit of a preview yeah, as to where I we're sure going. Did. We're I, talk I spoiled about, it. No, 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 not <laughs> spoiled it. We're going to talk about dedicating your home to God, protecting your home by giving it to God. Yeah. And I am so excited about this episode. But before we dive in, I want to remind our listeners, our viewers, that we like to hear from y'all. Mm -hmm. So in the comments, in the reviews, make sure you put in there what you want us to speak to. This is obviously something y'all are saying, hey, hey, we want to hear about this. We want to know how do we protect our home? How do we consecrate our home to God in this crazy world where we're constantly bombarded by these attacks of evil and perversion and different agendas that are trying to make their way into our home. So how do we protect it? How do we dedicate it to God? So this is a response to that. And I just want yeah. to encourage y'all, write it in the reviews, write it in the comments if you're engaging with us on YouTube so we can continue to hear from you and respond to the questions that you're asking through the show. And also just letting us know, how is this show impacting your life? I think I overheard you on prayer a couple weeks ago talking about someone coming up and, and talking about the impact of a podcast. And it was yeah. the funniest aha moment for me because it is easy. We're in a room with a few people, you know, it's not a live audience and we're talking to each yeah. other and thinking like, oh, this is really good and rich, but it's easy to not really know the impact and be fueled to continue in this journey. I'm hearing so. about it more than once, Julie, and people are being impacted. So your labor is so appreciated by me, by Lisa, and by all these people that are being touched Awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. So let us know. Yeah. Get in the comments. Just let us know what you liked, what you want more of, questions. What you didn't like. Yeah, anything. And we can handle it, right? We can handle some like, critical Like We want to know you and interact with you in this. You know, We want to be putting positive stuff out into this space. Yeah. And that's kind of where we're going today. This is important. At yeah. home, this world at home yeah. is very important. Yes. Which is a great segue into the verse that I want to read to set the tone for today's show. Love this verse. Okay? And I, of course, you're going to love it. Mr. Fear of the Lord. You're going to, <laughs> you're going to be all about this the verse. I love the whole Bible. Oh, Julie's <laughs> one up at you already. Okay, <laughs> here we go. It's Proverbs 14, verse 26. It says, whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress. Ooh, I like that. Has a secure fortress. And for their children, it will be a refuge. Mm -hmm. My God. Wow. There's so much in that one verse. Yeah. Rich. So much spiritually, naturally. Oh, let, let, where are we going? I'm just let, like, I just okay. talk about the fear of the Lord for three seconds. And then I just kind of look at you, Mr. Fear of the Lord. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on in your spirit when we read that verse? Like, Mr. All of God. I really, I really don't want to be out. known as Mr. All of God, Mr. Fear of the Lord. <laughs> oh, is that okay? Is that okay? Sorry. to be known as. Uh, okay. It's my passion. It's my heart. Um, it. let, let, me okay. say, let me say this before, because I, I just, I want to press the button and you just go. Okay. But let, <laughs> let no, me say this. We're here to have a conversation. I, I, yeah, we are, but I'm pressing the button. You're going to Okay. But I'm so thankful for the heritage in our family yeah. that is grounded in the fear of God. I look at the impact it's had on my brothers. I look at the impact it's had on us and our families, my children, the way you've decided to live, um, the wonder, the awe that you have of God, of the holiness of scripture, the way you have faithfully dug into scripture and prayer for decades, for decades, we have seen the secure fortress 
in our home. And of course, it's ultimately God responding, God's faithfulness. You're responding to his faithfulness and the revelation he's given to you. But this has been your passion. This has been your pursuit. And we're supposed to worship God, but we're supposed to give honor to whom honor is due. And I want to honor you. And I, and I hope people listen to this episode. I hope really like you're listening to someone, the voice of my father, who is someone who is worthy of honor, particularly in this area, who's lived his life. And dad, let, let me just say this. I'm blushing. Who's, who's lived his life in a way that fears God. And even when you've missed it, as, as someone who knows well, you this is all part of it <laughs> that's 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 okay who who knows you arguably better than anyone but mom i mean like uh, yeah, all of us true. know you very closely yeah, i'm not trying to say i'm the top no. of the boys but i've known you the longest yep. of the 37 boys. Years, I have, 38 I have, years almost. almost 38 years the way you have responded when you've missed it is is such a a nod to your sensitivity to god and your humility before god and so I share all of that just to set the stage because I want people listening. I really want you to lean in. We have a gift today in you, my dad, and what you're going to share on this subject. And there's a lot of homes out there. And I sense this in my spirit. There's a lot of homes out there. You don't have peace. You're confused. You feel like the enemy has just free reign yeah, in your chaos. home. Chaos is Lord of your home. And I'm telling you, please, please lean in to what? JB, my dad is going to share today. Let's let's first of all talk about the benefits here. Yeah. Uh, before I go into the fear of the Lord, we have a secure fortress. That's our home. Yeah. So it's secure. Um, remember Elijah, Elisha, excuse me, and his servant. Uh, the whole massive army came to destroy them, and the servant was freaking out. But Elisha was a man who feared God. Yeah. Greatly feared God, and he said, "Lord, just open his eyes and let him see." that there's a whole lot more with us than them. And the servant's eyes are open and there's these massive white, brilliantly white chariots from heaven all around where they were staying. Yeah. Now, that is a provision to, from God to every single one of his children, everyone. The question becomes, is he that fortress for us or is he not? Even though he is willing, are we positioning ourselves? The fear of the Lord does that. Now, Let's talk about this. Their children, <clears throat> and for their children, it will be a refuge. I absolutely lo love Psalm 112, and I have a different Psalm here, but I'm going to go to Psalm 112 because Psalm 112 to me speaks so much and so important about our children. But I want to read this to everybody listening. It says, Praise the Lord, how joyful are those who fear the Lord. Now, here's an evidence of somebody who fears the Lord and delight. Mm -hmm. delight in obeying his commands there. And, and we got to remember people, when they hear commands, they think old Testament. Now there's over 500 commands in the new Testament. Jesus said, go into all the world, and make disciples of all nations, teaching them whatever I command you. He said, he who has my commands and keeps them is he who loves me. I'm freaking some people out right now. Don't be freaked out. Old Testament commands were for us to try to have yeah. a relationship with yeah. God. Totally can't be done. Proven done. Yeah period. You can never, ever keep the commands of God and earn a relationship with him. New Testament commands, they are given, which are over 500, to enhance our intimacy with God, which what is what... say they're the commands of life? Like these commands these of are life. the I love ways that. of living Even, that, li that lead us to the life that we were created to design. And this is eternal enjoy. life, yeah. knowing him. Yeah, so it's right. intimacy, knowing intimacy, right? Yeah. All right. So they delight in obeying his commands and if you look at Paul, the apostle, he makes a statement in Philippians. He said, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but in my absence. So even when we don't sense the presence of God, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The fear of the Lord keeps us obeying even when we don't sense that God is near us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, there, this is verse two. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. That word entire generation literally means this, generations. Generation after generation after generation after generation. Now, I like the ESV. It says his offspring will be mighty in the land. Now, this speaks of refuge and protection for your children. Um, I look at the way you guys were raised. It should have been a failure. It should have been. I'm gone over 200 nights a year. Your dad's gone over 200 nights a year. Your yeah. kids should be so resenting God, so resenting ministry, so resenting their dad. But yet, I look in awe and wonder 
And I think, my boys actually like me. Yeah. They actually <laughs> love me. And only God could have done that. Yeah. And I remember when I was really, really sweating this, bullets over this, God spoke to me one day and he said, your protection is in your obedience to me. Yeah. And I've watched God be faithful to that. And I'm so grateful. Now, we, we're talking about the benefits, a secure fortress. And we are talking today about securing our home. And this is something I was pretty big on. And you said to me this morning, Dad, I'm so glad you're going to be on this one because this is your passion. It is. Yeah. And I want to see people, everybody out there have protected homes. Yeah. Now, let's go. Let's let's backtrack here before we talk about the benefit and talk about the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord, when Jesus says, he said, hey, don't you guys realize, like there's a multitude of people in, in Luke 12 that are before him. Most preachers are going to say, hey, guys, he's got the staff over here. Turn aside. This is what I'm created for. I got to preach to these multitudes you can't even number. He doesn't. He turns to them first and he says, guys, let me tell you something. There is absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing that is secret that will not be made known. There is absolutely nothing covered up that will not be brought to the light. Yeah. What do you've spoken in secret, which is in your mind, which you think in your mind is going to be shouted from the housetops. Yeah. And they're all like trembling because he has just talked to them about don't be hypocrites like the Pharisees yeah. who act one way outwardly and act another way inwardly. Yeah. So he says this, right? And then he says, therefore, I'm telling you, don't fear those who can kill your body and afterwards do nothing to yourself. Fear God who, after he's killed your body, can cast your soul into hell. He is the one you should fear. What is Jesus saying to us? He's saying the fear of the Lord will keep you in touch with your motives and intentions. Mm. There are a lot of people that they're out of, actually out of touch with their motives and intentions because their consciences have been dulled. Yeah, like right? it's seared. Seared. And so the fear of the Lord keeps you in touch with your motives keeps you in touch with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And what it does is when you make mistakes, you can barely even sleep until you go make it right. So you and I both know that your dad made tons of mistakes. And I'm first to admit it, tons and tons and tons and tons. But one thing I was able to do is stay in touch with my motives, my intentions, yeah. my, my, my anger, my thoughts, because of the fear of God. Yeah. And I would have to come back and say, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, that right there is the beginning of, of securing your home, but it's not the end. So everybody needs to keep listening. Yeah. So we'll, 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 we'll camp on this one for a minute because to me, there are portals in a home. There's portals naturally and there's portals spiritually. Okay. And we want to talk about a secure fortress where we close up enemy portals. Mm -hmm. You got to have this foundation. Because I've seen people put into practice what we're about to talk about who didn't walk in the fear of the Lord and their homes still weren't They're protected. just trying to check the boxes. They're trying yeah. to check the boxes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, And by portal, you mean any kind of an opening. Opening. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. I should say that. Oh, openings to the enemy. Yeah. And they're natural portals, openings. There's a natural, they're spiritual. Mm -hmm. They're both of them. And both have to be guarded. And some are both. Like they're a natural, yep. that's yep. also a spiritual and portal. I'm going to say something. If mom was here, I think she would agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I mean, y'all, er, everybody who knows out there, Lisa's we have to very throw something quick in the to comments. let me know yeah. when she disagrees, which I love. Okay, so if the dad's not doing it, it's not as secure. Mm -hmm. I mean, being made the head of the home doesn't mean you're the boss of the home. Does it, it, yeah, okay, yeah, um, I, I don't want to go that far. I'm saying, well, you're not. You're not the boss of the home. Being the head of the home means you're responsible. Yeah. You're responsible to and you're responsible to protect everybody. Yeah. yeah. And and that realization came on me when I was first married because Lisa, everybody, er, everybody knows this. Lisa had a horrific upbringing and she, her parents were divorced twice. Um, she's got her dad leaving her mom to go live with a woman. Um, she's got all this Jezebel stuff going on throughout. I mean, she literally saw that spirit, right? And I remember. It's all be coming up while we're engaged and just after we're married. And I'm out praying, literally. I would go out and pray two hours in tongues. I would just walk around praying in tongues and say, I don't even know what to pray. And I remember we were going to a marriage counselor at that time, and he was very, very godly. And he looked at me and he said, young man, I want you to know, God told me that your prayers have gotten through. Mm. Now, wow. I am so thankful that God put it in my heart to pray, but... I'm praying while we're engaged. I'm praying shortly after we're married, but it wasn't for two more years that the word of the Lord that literally set her free from generations of captivity, 
gener- I mean, her grandmother's married four times. Her grandmother had, had an argument with her grandfather, and he dies of a heart attack during the argument, okay? I mean, there was real issues in her family. I, I'm ignorant. All I know is I don't know what to do. And all I know is that when you pray in the Spirit, you pray the perfect will of God. And I am out there praying, and I said, God, I don't know what, I don't know what to pray. I don't, I, it seems like my prayers aren't getting anywhere. I don't know what to pray. I'm just going to pray in the Spirit. Well, it, it was long. It, it wasn't immediate. But somebody gets in her hands this deliverance message, yeah. and she goes through a deliverance, and literally I watch, literally watch this woman change right before my eyes. Wow. And I'm like, oh, wow. Well, that right there gives me an indication that as the husband, as the dad— my responsibility is to protect in the spirit. I realized right then, okay, buck stops here. I'm really the one responsible and for, for really protecting this marriage and this household. So when kids started coming along, I realized that I started praying. You know what I was praying? I'm, I'm, I, I think about this often because all four of our sons are so good looking. And I'm like, Lisa and I look and go, where did that come from? You oh, know? my gosh. And, you know, I kept praying every every single day. God, let our boys be beautiful and handsome and mighty in spirit and physical. Let them be good looking boys. And God answered it. I mean, I was like, wow. wow. I mean, such. That's it. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> seriously, I'm thinking such a trivial thing for your oh brain, Bavir. But you know what? He answered it. But I think you guys are a reflection of what your spirits are. Mm. Your spirits are strong. They're mighty, right? And your your outward looks look like it. I mean, <laughs> David was handsome. All, all this right. stuff. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not trying to me. You're handsome because I'm your dad. Yeah, okay. okay. Everybody else is probably going. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Come on. No. Hey, every dad should think their kids are yeah. absolutely handsome absolutely. and beautiful, right? So I receive it, Dad. So you. anyway, so I hear you saying that it is the man's place as the head of the home, as the protector, to take that ground. Obviously, the question is already out yeah. there. What about women whose men aren't doing that? I know. Or I there's that not a man in place. What would you I say? God to them? honors it. Yeah. So what happens when the man doesn't do his job? The woman raises her hand in the spirit and goes, I'm in God. So now I believe God honors that and I believe she can protect. Okay. If you look at Paul, Paul said, even if they're preaching Jesus out of envy and strife and they're adding to my chains, praise God, Jesus is being preached. Yeah. In other words, what's the bigger priority? Yeah. Okay. So again, it comes down to the family. What's more important, that it's actually a man that's protecting the family or somebody steps in and says, I'll do it. So I want all those moms to know, Juliana, that they have the authority, if their husbands shirk it, to protect their children and their home. And in the same way, if you are blessed to be in a marriage where you do have a husband who is wanting to do this, even if he doesn't know exactly how to do it perfectly, be an ally in supporting them, saying, I like seek God. I want you to be the one who is consecrating our home first and foremost. I'm going to partner with you in that, but I'm not going to be be nitpicky and saying, hey, you're not doing this perfectly, or right. let's let's listen to the at-home podcast again oh so gosh. we can take notes and really figure Please out. don't ever weaponize our podcast. Well, let me tell you how Lisa did it. I started <laughs> laughing hysterically uh, while you were trying trying to hold it back, but I remember a couple of days, Lisa literally with her leg pushing me out of the bed at 4, 4.30, 4.45 in the morning saying, get out there and pray. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still My to gosh. this day remember it. Literally, I'm feeling the Sicilian woman just boom and say, get out and go pray. And I did, you know. That's so, powerful, though, that she sure, positioned she you me. and encouraged yeah. you in that. Okay, so ideally, the man is stepping up in that position, leading the home in this desire to consecrate their home to God. Yes. What else? What's next? All right, so... Let's get to the nuts and bolts, Mm -hmm. okay? The nuts and bolts are this. God gave authority to mankind on the earth, okay? So I want everybody out there to get an image of the American military in Iraq. They're fighting a war. The president, who was Bush at the time, is the commander-in-chief, and the guy gets on the radio and says, President Bush, help, they're shooting at me. What's President Bush going to say? I gave you the training. I gave you the weapons. I gave you the knowledge. 
fire back. Mm. Okay. The problem is we have so many people asking God to protect their, their, their homes when God is saying, you protect your home. You have the authority. Mm. So something I always did is I spoke directly to the enemy, the word of God. Okay. Because that's what Jesus did. He, when, when, when the enemy was tempting him in the wilderness, he didn't say, Father, please, you know, protect me. Please get rid of this devil that's, that's, that's tormenting me, right? Trying to torment me right now. Um, he didn't do that. He spoke right to him. It is written. So one of the things that I knew to do right from early on is that I would speak the word of God over our children, over our home. And that is very important. So let me, let me give you a scripture. Isaiah says, no weapon formed against you. Oh gosh, Isaiah 54, 17. I hope it's right. Please help me, Addison. You're, you're, you're brilliant. Um, Isaiah 54, 17. Right. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Yeah. So weapons will be formed. But every how are they formed? Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. That's right. <clears throat> so there's things. Okay, demons are surfers. Everybody needs to see it like that. They need a wave, and a wave is people's words. There have been so many times we knew people were speaking about us, and we, we realized, okay, things are happening right now, and I would go out and just speak to the enemy in Jesus' name. Yeah. And I would actually sense the Holy Spirit say, son, go after the devil. Mm. I would sense it. I'd be out praying and saying, you know, God, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. What's going on? And I'd hear, son, go after the enemy. And he would sometimes tell me specifically in my spirit, yeah. go after this. This is being spoken against you. Speak. And I would speak the word of God that was contrary, or not contrary, that, that over superseded what I heard in my spirit, people speaking against us. Mm -hmm. It is contrary too. Yeah, sure it, it is. It, it, it counteracts it. Yeah. Yeah, because a spirit of fear, I and mean, I love the teaching on spirit of intimidation, it's going to come against you and try to change your orientation from a from being rooted in the fear of God. If God is for me, what can man do against me? To that place of fear of man, which is when you start listening to those thoughts and those lies of the enemy. And if we think about the, the purpose of the accuser, the Satan in Revelation 12, it describes him as someone who contends day and night. His constant position is accusation. Mm -hmm. He's accusing yeah. the brethren. Like that's, that's what he's doing. That's what he lives for. And we cast him down. He's cast down by what? The blood of the lamb and the word, the word, the spoken word of our testimony. And that's what you're getting at here with Isaiah 54. And even what you mentioned earlier from Luke 12, if, if we continue with that thought, Jesus says, Hey, fear him. He cares for these sparrows. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah. fear him. And guess what? He cares for these sparrows. If he cares for the sparrows, how much more is he going to care for you? How much more valuable are you? How much more valuable are you to him? And so you actually don't need to be afraid. You can be rooted in the fear of God, which is this boldness, this audacity that's like, if God is for me, who or what can be against me? And then you speak and you respond from that place of authority. Because we have to remember our formation as parents, so much of it is our formation as sons and daughters of God. Yeah. Like we're seeing how God interacts with us as children as he's entrusting us with children of our own. And we're starting to learn what it is to rule, what it is to reign, what it is to speak with authority, because he is developing in us the capacity to be an ambassador for his word. Like God loves it when we speak his word back to him. There's a resonance there yeah. that we feel and we see in the natural. And that is powerful. And God wants us to see that and participate in it with more confidence and assurance, knowing that he's given it to us. Well, where is the word of God called the sword of the spirit? Ephesians 6. And what is Paul talking about? Let's look at it in context. We don't wrestle war against flesh, flesh and, and blood. blood. Yeah. But against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high yeah. places. Yeah. And then he talks about putting on the armor of God, and he says, your only offensive part of your armor is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So I get this visual when I'm praying that I literally have a sword. And if you look at Colossians, Jesus disarmed the enemy. Disarmed yeah. him. Yeah, disarmed him. Okay? So, so many people are afraid when it comes to speaking to the enemy. 
So the enemy will try to intimidate you to get you scared to speak to him because if you speak to him, he'll get meaner with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> can, can, He's a bully. Can I, ch can I challenge you on that? Yeah, sure. On Ephesians 6? Uh, it, mom huh. does you. No, no, no. no here, I want here. you to. I want let, you let, to. Because I, I grow. I learn no, from Because I actually think this is important for people to hear this. Yep. I would say there's two. Two offensive weapons. Tell me. The shield me. of faith. In actual war, I would agree with when that. you have okay. a shield, a shield is not just a defensive weapon. Yeah, I it is an that. offensive weapon. You are pushing them back. I, see, you are hitting I people. I just got enlightened. So, I've so, never seen but, that but listen, before. Listen, they, they work together. Yes. You have the shield of yes. faith. And then you have the sword of the spirit. You're going after it together. And, and the shield of faith you use for advancement. That's right. Oh my goodness, Addison, thank you for saying that. So, because, because, please, God, keep God, me. God honors faith. Yes. It pleases yes. him. He yes. is pleased. He takes pleasure in our faith. Why? Because it's showing, like, hey, you're getting this as my child. You're participating in my nature. You're calling those things not as they are but as they should be, as they could be. Like, that's the whole thought there of Hebrews 11. There are these men and women wow. who didn't just see the natural. They saw the unseen. And by seeing the unseen, they fought for something that was greater than what they've known. And so I think it's so important for us to hear this because when we're talking about protecting and defending our home, the enemy is going to come after us with fear. Like we're talking about fear of the Lord being the foundation, right? but the enemy is going to come after us with fear to try to convince us that we don't have the authority that we have. Fear of popular opinion, opinion, fear of culture, fear of our own failures, our own mistakes, our own lack of sufficiency. Whereas God's like, hey, no, actually boast in your weakness. I think it's 2 Corinthians 12, like, hey, Paul's saying, God showed me the revelation. He's actually strong in my areas where I surrender my weakness to him. So I'm not going to try to hide this from God. I'm going to bring it to God and watch God show up in my home, in my life in ways that astound me. Cause I know this wasn't my own strength. This is the spirit of God moving in my life and showing something to my children, my friends, myself, that this is beyond me. This is greater than me. But I think that spirit of fear, dad, is what keeps a lot of people from stepping into their God given authority that they need to protect their home. Yeah. Boy, that's so good. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining in this week at Home with the Beveers. We're gonna cut this into a two-parter. So we're still gonna release the rest of this episode in two weeks from now. In the meantime, you can leave any comments of what you're thinking about with this episode so far or any questions. We always love your questions and it really helps us formulate content like this. Once again, thanks so much for joining us at Home with the Beveers.